Devon Gestorati picking up Camalochi, coming with Lord Aspen and Inspectors coming as well. Right across the track chasing Odyssey Moon. Odyssey Moon still in front though. Odyssey Moon, Camo got him home. JR and N Burke at Telegraph, Group 1 Racing this Saturday at Trentham. And Robert Smurden joins us on the line from Australia. Hi Robert, how are you today? Yeah, good, thanks, Ryan. Good. Look, Odyssey Moon, this horse is formerly with uh, Rod Northam. Uh, how did this horse come about to be in your stable and how long have you trained him for? He raced in for Rod Northam as a two-year-old and a spring three-year-old and then after his spring three-year-old preparation, he spelled in Victoria and they decided they wanted to base him out of Victoria. So mm. I'd had a connection with James Harron through... He was the agent who brought Shamal Wind out of our stable and uh, we had a connection through that. And so when he was decided to keep him in Victoria, um, I got the nod. So that's how he arrived there. And I had him as uh, an autumn three-year-old, was our first preparation with him. And he had quite a lengthy, solid preparation um, before a break. And, uh, and this is our second prep with him. Look, he, he was a good two-year-old too. A couple of links behind Vancouver and a slipper. When did you make the, the plan to target the Telegraph and come to New Zealand? Well, we um, we had we were sort of looking at heading across there for the New Year's Day sprint at um, uh, Ellerslie, but that didn't work out uh, time-wise, so we stayed in Melbourne and ran him in the Standish. And then uh, I really didn't have this race on the on the radar. It was, his, it was James Harron who... Uh, who once he won the stand, he uh, identified the Telegraph as a race that would be a good next option for him. So uh, it wasn't originally in the plans, but uh, it fitted in nicely with the timing of his first of his second up run, rather. And uh, 19 days between runs gave us a good opportunity to get him across, get him over that uh, run, and get him across there in, in good shape. And that appears to be the case. That was a great win in the Standish. Is that the sort of racing style we can expect on Saturday? Is he a go forward horse? I didn't think he'd lead, or I didn't intend to lead. I thought he doesn't normally lead. That race lacked pace, and we thought we'd be closer than normal. We thought we'd be in the first three or four, but that decision to lead was Noel's initiative when nothing wanted to take it up, and he was very comfortable in front, and the sectionals would show they weren't going very fast at all. So it was the right decision um, to to let him do that, and he seemed to, to race well there. But... I think it was more the circumstances of the day and the lack of speed in the race that uh, that saw him in front. I wouldn't have thought, in normal circumstances, he's not necessarily not normally a leader. What's the plan from 19? You've copped a bit of a visitor's draw. Will you leave that up to Noel, or are there instructions there for him? Nothing there at the moment. I would sort of have a look at it, and I'll try and get some advice on the, on the track and, and competition. I haven't really had an opportunity to... Uh, to analyse it very closely, we'll get some advice. And, mm. But in these cases, um, when you've got an awkward draw, you do have to leave a fair bit to uh, the jockey's initiative, and I guess that's why we employ the best jockey we can get. He's staying with the Baker Forsman team. What reports have you had out of their Cambridge base about how the, the horse has settled into New Zealand? Really happy with uh, a man there with him, said the horse has thrived, yes, and Mr Beat. He did a bit of work on Tuesday morning, but um, I, I thought he had a bit of a physical improvement to come out of his second up run. Before the stand, I was a bit concerned that he was still a bit round. And I think the fact they went slow the first half allowed him to probably get away with it. But he was a bit a fitter horse after that. Um, and we just had to keep him kicking over. And they said he's, he travelled across without incident and he's thrived. He loves his environment there. Um, down at Cambridge, um, Cambridge has been great. And the environment, he's really thrived. So we can't... Uh, no complaints on that side. Just finally, there was on Odyssey Moon, there was a bit of rain forecast today, Robert. That hasn't eventuated at the moment. But if the track was to soften, would that be an advantage or a disadvantage for your horse? It'd help him. Yeah, he likes to cut out of the ground. If that, okay. he, he's effective on top, but if he gets a bit of cut out of the ground, it, uh, he's even more effective. Are you confident for Saturday? Uh, look, I think all reports are that he's in, uh, he's in good shape, so... If he gets there and with his A game, um, he can be in the mix. Yeah, he can certainly be in the mix because he's a horse with a lot of talent. Just a couple of horses in Australia that you've got at the moment. Uh, Property looks a smart two-year-old, ran into catchy last start. What's the plan with him next? He'll either run in the Blue Diamond preview for Colts and Gellings next Thursday or he'll go to the 
two hour race at Mooney Valley the following day for Friday. So he'll run Thursday or Friday of next week. What about Outdoor? That was a super win at Flemington. Is there a race like the Australian Guineas over the mile at Flemington in early March maybe on the radar? Well, at this stage, you will go back to Flemington next Saturday. There's another race, uh, identical to the one who won last time. So he'll go that way and we'll probably assess it after that. I think maybe he's really deep into his preparation and a race of the Australian Guineas might not suit or might not fit. Mm. So I think we're probably looking for a break and he's a horse that we'd be thinking about taking to Brisbane for the winter. Yeah, for sure. And Royden's Doll was a, was a good winner at Sandown yesterday. You trained this one for champion thoroughbred. So where to next for this filly? She's uh, staying bad filly, obviously, out of, a, out of a little mare who won an Oaks. We, now that she's won and won a city race, we'd like to get some black type and the the next available opportunity will be the uh, three-year-old fillies races in Tasmania, the Strut Stakes and the Tasmanian Oaks. So She'll go to one or both of those for her next couple of runs. OK, and just finally, I see Hockter's come into your stable, a Crystal Mile winner, a Tramway winner at Group 2 level. Is this a horse we can look forward to seeing him in the autumn? Yeah, I think so. He'd done a bit of work at his owners probably before he arrived, and he's progressing really well. He's only been there probably two weeks now, but done a couple of bits of work, and he's obviously a talented horse. If we can get... Uh, if he can... If he, he seems to still have the desire for the job, and... Uh, mm. If we can get him right on the right day, he's a, he's a real talent, there's no question. Hey, thanks very much for coming on today, Robert, and good luck with your charge in the Group 1 Telegraph Odyssey Moon on Saturday. No worries, Ryan. Thanks very much. Good stuff. Robert Smurden joining us here on Trackside 1. And look, he did mention any rain will uh, aid the horse's chances. It hasn't arrived yet. And maybe expect uh, a forward showing from the horse in terms of the early going. Might just have to push the button and go forward. Uh, thank him for his time. Odyssey Moon and Noel Callow lining up in the Group 1 Telegraph. This